Hello everybody and welcome to Metal Gear Speedrunners Tactical Espionage Affiliation. I am your host, Apache Smash. This is the day one of our three-day event to celebrate the channel uh, reaching affiliate status. I'm now going to throw it over to someone you know extremely well. It's Jaguar King running Metal Gear Solid 4 and welcome to you, Jag. Hello, hello everyone. How are you guys doing? Jaguar King here. Nice to meet you all. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are in the world. I'll be running, I'll be going to start this marathon with Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, which happens to be a game that I'm about to run in about a month from now at Awesome Games Done Quick 2021. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. And yeah, uh, before I start this run, I would like to remind everyone that um, I'm pretty much, uh, I have already set up my PlayStation 3 clocks to either Sunday and Wednesday. And the reason for that is because uh, you're going to know why. Uh, it's going to help us a lot and I'm going to explain it during the, the run itself. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, timer is going to start in a little bit in... Three, two, one, and let's go. So, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. It was a PlayStation 3 game that was released back in 2018 by the genius, hideous Hideo Kojima. And I'm playing the boss extreme difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty in the game. So, while doing so, I'm going to try my best to get... Big boss emblem, although I'm not sure it's gonna happen, but it's gonna be nice. Yeah, I would like to mention this game is so random. I just got shot by stray bullets. Yeah, MGS4 is by far the most random Metal Gear Solid game in the whole series. I've been speedrunning like a lot of Metal Gear games, and this is by far the most random one. I mean, you run can die for any reason whatsoever. I mean, without, without having a choice or say on the matter. Just like you can die for no reason at all, or you can get an alert or anything. So I said that I'm, we're gonna. I'm playing with the boss extreme. I'm gonna try to get the big boss emblem. The requirement for the big boss emblem is to beat the game in less than five hours, with no kills, no continues, no ration used, and no alerts. So yeah, it's the most strict uh, type of requirements in any Metal Gear game whatsoever. Uh, but the problem with this, like, when you try to get a big boss emblem, is the RNG. The RNG in this game is unforgiving, especially in Act 1. And we're going to start with Act 1. Yeah, this game consists of acts. There's, like, five acts. And we're going to start with Act 1. This is the hardest act, actual in the boss extreme. As I said before, things could go wrong, I mean, and there's nothing you could do about it. It's just how the RNG in this game works. For example, these batch of soldiers could spot me, and there's nothing I could do about it. So, yeah, so hopefully the RNG was going to be on our side and just for the first part and then we can worry about anything else. So coming up is the first hardest part of the game in the run, which is Red Zone. And since we do not have access to our equipment, which are the Mark II pistol and the stuff, uh, we're going to have to deal what we are, what we have here. So I'm shooting this guard. And I'm again, I'm gonna run here, sneak in behind the guard, this guard in front of me, the PMCs, and then I'm gonna stun him with the stun knife, as long as he stand up, and then we're gonna continue. So this is the first part, the red zone, and here we're gonna meet Arakan with his little Metal Gear Mark II. He's gonna give us equipments and everything that we actually gonna need. So. Yeah, it's kind of a schlep, actually, to speedrun this game. Uh, we're going to go to the safe house, which is the Melissa safe house. Uh, this game, there are like two types of enemies. There are the PMCs, which are the one that I just CQC'd, and there are the Militia, which are these great fellas in front of me. The Militia can be hostile or friendly, and we need to be on their friendly side. Otherwise, uh, we're going to get an alert. So we are inside the Militia house here. 
so we need to sneak in here and hopefully we're gonna get some good rng especially with the first patch of soldiers right here and we're gonna have to like to win their trust by giving them rations but sometimes even by giving them ration things will not work all right this seems to be good so i'm gonna give this guy a ration and this will allow me and they're gonna like ignore me and then i'm gonna continue but that's not enough so i'm gonna have to give this guy another ration All right, so we're not done yet. There are going to be a bunch of soldiers coming up soon. Uh, this one, this guy here, I'm going to roll into him to knock him down. I'm going to shoot these guys too here. All right, and we're not done yet. We're going to go. There are going to be another soldier that I need to roll in. I mean, the roll hitbox in this game is extremely small compared to something like MGS3, Portable Ops. But now the danger zone is gone. Now I have got the disguise. This is the militia disguise. By having this, uh, the militia will always be friendly unless you attack them or pretty much uh, damage them in sh some shape or form. Uh, you will not get alerted by them and we can like pretty much snake freely without having to worry to get a militia alert because you can actually get an alert from a militia. So now we're done with this area. We're gonna head to the next area. And then we're going to meet Drepin. So Drepin is the merchant in Metal Gear Solid 4. If you remember the merchant from Resident Evil 4, welcome strangers. Well, Drepin is the merchant here. He can buy stuff from you. He can sell you stuff. And the most importantly, he have a weapon that we need to get. Hopefully by the beginning of Act 3, if things goes correctly, which is the M8250 caliber sniper rifle. And uh, yeah. So remember when I said that I am set up the PlayStation 3 to either Sunday or Wednesday? And uh, the reason for that, this will, uh, by playing the game on either of these two days, uh, you're going to get a 20% discount off Drippin Shop. This will allow us to purchase the 50 caliber uh, from Drippin. 50 caliber usually costs approximately 20,000 Drippin points. But by playing either Sunday or Wednesday, you're going to get that 20% discount off. And then you'll be able to purchase the 50 caliber at 160 drop-in points. Which is pretty much doable and which pretty much what we need to do uh, in order to get uh, Big Boss Emblem. And because that weapon is extremely powerful and it's going to definitely help us a lot against the third, I mean the third boss fight. The second boss fight which is Raging Raven in Act 3. So here we have the drum. The drum is actually a really, really good weapon. It's the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. You're going to see how powerful this weapon is. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, right now, we're in a militia uh, PMC fight zone. So. Okay. There we go. A little bit of bad RNG there. So, anytime there's like a fight between... Or a fight between the militia and the PMC... There's always going to be some RNG into it. You might end up dying to some weird stuff. You might end up getting stray bullets. And you might end up getting an alert. And hopefully this will not happen here. So... Especially this next area. If anyone watched my stream yesterday, something bad happened here. Hopefully it's not going to happen. So here there are like two snipers. I'm going to have to take them down with my Mark II pistol. Every time I see the exclamation mark on top of their head, it means that I actually hit them. So here's a good example of some bad RNG. You see that car in front of me? It could explode and scares the shit out of me and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, it did not happen. This fan could explode and scares the shit out of me. And thankfully it did not happen. So now we can continue normally. I can get spotted by the PMC on the right side here and there's nothing I can do about it. So this is what I meant by like this game being full of RNG. And Sometimes all you have to do is just go in and pray things will go on accordingly without any issues whatsoever. So we made a pass to the plaza here. Or the hotel room, whatever, whatever. So in this area, uh, there are going to be a bunch of gas mines that I need to shoot. Uh, our objective on Act 1 is to meet Rat Patrol 01, and they are pretty much taking position on this area. So we're going to go in and meet them. However, they have wrecked this place with uh, gas mines. Sleeping gas mines to be exact. So we're gonna have to go in and shoot them and destroy them. And then we're gonna go in and meet the Rat Patrol Zero One. 
And but before we do so, we're gonna do some menuing. So we're gonna equip the sleep gas statue that we picked up earlier, and then we're gonna equip the drum can that we picked up earlier as well. And then we're gonna meet the Rat Patrol 01. And then it's gonna start the first encounter against the frog units. Nano machines, son. Banana. So yeah, it's yeah, by the way, that's Meryl, in case you guys are wondering. She's alive and well. Move. Do you mind if I uh, interrupt you for a moment, Jack? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks very much. I just want to say uh, thank you to Dash Rando, who gifted five community subs in the chat. That does take us over uh, our original, uh, for our first bonus game, Metal Gear 2 by Mini Omega King at 25 subs. We are now at 29. So thank you, everyone. At 35, there will be a bonus run unlocked of Metal Gear Solid 3 European Extreme Tuxedo uh, ran by myself as well. Uh, thank you everyone for your support. Alright, thanks you. Thank you guys very much for all the subs and gifting subs and the donations. You guys are the best. So yeah, now we have just saw the drum can in its full glory. So that's why we call it the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. As it guess say, as you guys can saw, it knocked down enemies, and it can wreak havoc onto them. So here, I'm gonna have to wait for Johnny to show up. I'm gonna punch him, and he's gonna give me sleep gas satchels. So I put one on the top of the rooftop, and I'm waiting for a certain audio cue to know. Oh, what is this doing here? So for some reason, that frog unit just spawned there. That's kind of unusual. This is the random part about the game that is kind of scary. So we're going to use the drum can here. There we go. So I'm actually planting sleep gas touchal on certain areas for spawn points where, like, the frog unit is going to end up spawning. So I have planted two. I'm going to wait for Meryl to say contact, and then I'm going to detonate both of them. There we go. And then there are going to be three. All right. And that is for the first part. So, as I said before, uh, since we need to purchase the 50 caliper from Drepin, it's really important to pick up any weapons that we can actually find on our way uh, so we can sell them to Drepin. Uh, Drepin is going to purchase the weapon, any weapon that we pick up uh, any extra weapon that we actually pick up and um, by doing that we can accumulate so many points that we actually need uh, to purchase the 50 caliber later on so here i'm gonna put a bunch of uh statuals sleep gas statuals here on these specific spots these spots are where the frog units gonna spawn and here I'm gonna punch Akiba and make him shit his pants. Yeah, we're gonna literally make him poop his pants. And by doing so, this will allow you to skip a cutscene, a mini cutscene where Akiba is gonna start crying. Commander, I wanna go to the bathroom, my stomach hurts, blah, blah, blah. But by punching him, you're gonna relieve his stomach from all the poop that is pretty much accumulated inside of him. So, yeah. Now we're gonna have to go all the way here and wait for both Meryl and Akiba to show up. So here's uh, another random part. Hopefully, uh, Meryl is not gonna rush in through the collapsed wall. The wall, which is right there, is gonna be destroyed and collapsed. Hopefully, Meryl is not gonna rush in immediately and ended up killing herself because that actually could happen. Thankfully, it did not happen. So here, we're gonna use the drum can again. Roll, roll, roll. I'm gonna detonate two of the sleeps gas statuals and then I'm gonna use the drum can again there we go and now we're done I'm gonna roll here by rolling into Akiba I'm gonna wake him up early and then I'm gonna hit get rid uh, get to the next spot so this is an unskippable cutscene there are gonna be plenty of unskippable cutscene that cannot be skipped and here you can see the aftermath of what happened to Johnny's pants. Poor man. So, 
There's gonna be a bunch of frog units coming up soon, but we are pretty much at the end, so we're not done yet. So here I'm gonna do a little bit of a safe strat. I'm gonna drop down immediately. I'm gonna pick up the stun grenade. Another stun grenade here. I'm gonna wait for Jonathan to drop down. Roll into him. This is gonna force the frog units to... Uh, for a fast spawn. Otherwise, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. And that's gonna waste time. And I'm gonna use another sleep gas touch shield right now. And I'm gonna shoot these frog units one at a time. And there we go. And that is the frog units fights. Pick up some ammo. Pick up more smog, uh, smoke grenades and we're pretty much done. And then we're gonna scare Meryl by having a barrel. Yeah. Looks like these guys uh, are not, did not see a barrel before, and Meryl was angry about it, so yeah, that was actually kind of funny. There we go, and that's the frog units. So we're not done yet, uh, there's going to be another part coming up soon. Uh, pretty much the hardest area in the game. Uh, which is Crescent Meridian. I could easily lose Big Boss Emblem here. Before we can do this, I'm going to go in and I'm going to equip the Stun Grenade and the Smoke Grenade at the same time. And then we're going to head to the Crescent Meridian. So this area, uh, I need to throw a Smoke Grenade, two Smoke Grenade at a specific spot at a specific time. Plus, I need to take it down uh, one PMC, which is on the second floor. And I need to do this really, really fast. Otherwise, I'm going to end up getting spotted. And then there is nothing I can do about it. So, hopefully things is going to go way accordingly. I have practiced this. But even with big practice, even like with perfectly throwing the smoke grenades that I talked about, things could not end up going into your favor, and you might end up getting an alert and there's nothing you can do about it. Remember, this game is random. Well, so let's just hope this is going to end up working. So here's the first smoke grenade. And here's the second one. I'm going to shoot this guy on the head. All right, so, so far things looks good, but it's not over until it's over. I might get spotted here and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm throwing a smoke grenade. See? Just like I said, and just like that, I have lost Big Boss Emblem. And it wasn't even my fault. It wasn't even my fault. I have done everything correctly, but sometimes the RNG, the RNG is unforgiving, and you might end up getting spotted, and that's what happened. I mean... What can we do about it? It's MGS4. It is something that you need to accept when you speedrun this game. Sometimes, even if you do everything correctly, and even if you do everything by the book, there's always something that can pretty much, like, screws everything up, and then, oh, whatever, just reset. So, unfortunately, I've lost Big Boss Emblem, which means we will not be able to purchase the 50 caliber by, uh, by the start of Act 2, so, yeah. So, since we already have lost Big Boss Emblem... I'm going to do uh, this area a little bit safe because I really do not want to get spotted again. So there's a faster way to do this area, but I'm going to do the old uh, safe strats, which is a little bit slow, which is going through that building. So we're going to go here. Uh, they're going to be a bunch of PMCs that I need to take down. So here I'm going to do two body shots for this guy. Thankfully... One of the good things about this game is that the Mark II pistol is extremely potent. It can take down an enemy with one shot on their bodies within like four seconds. After like four seconds, uh, the enemy is down. So, so we made it here. I'm going to use the barrel again. Knock this guy down. I'm going to shoot that boxes. We're going to go to the left. Shoot the sky, and then we're going to head to the exits. And that is Act 1. That was actually a decent Act 1. And too bad what happened with the Crusade Meridian, but I mean, I expected to, lo to lose Big Boss Emblem. There's nothing I could do about it. 
As I said before, this this run is random. And yeah. 1955. Top 20, that's actually quite good. So now we're gonna start the next act, act two. This act is gonna we're gonna have to go all the way to South America. And our goal here is to go and contact and meet Naomi Hunter. Yeah, Naomi Hunter. You guys remember her from MGS1. She's back. And now we're going to have to go in and meet her as well. Also, I would like to welcome everyone to the Metal Gear uh, Speedrunners uh, Marathon event. Tactical affiliation. Espionage. Espionage. Thank you, buddy. You're so, okay. yeah. If you like tea, you guys are welcome. So... This is what is the marathon. We're pretty much celebrating the channel going affiliate mode. Uh, if you if you subscribe, there are going to be a bunch of amazing emotes coming up soon. And uh, the more that we have subscriber points, the more emotes that you guys can use and enjoy as well. Like, hey, like that one, for example. So, Act 2. Uh, Act 2 has one hard part, which is the beginning one, which is Cove Valley. Yeah, this part, this area, is by far the hardest on Act 2. It's Head for the research things could go really, really out of hand. There's nothing you can do about it. So, first of all, there are militia and PMCs. We're gonna free the militia here, and hopefully, I'm not gonna end up getting a militia alert because that could be happening. That could happen. I'm gonna sneak in behind this guy, freeze him, shoot him, and then continue. Hopefully, the militia is gonna notice that, and then they're gonna uh, see my good deeds and think of me as a friendly. So, we're not done yet. There are going to be a bunch of PMCs. I'm going to do this the safe way. The safe way requires me to take down the PMCs at a certain order. It's a little bit slow, but it's actually safe. Even if it is safe, it's not that safe. It is safe, but not that safe. So, these PMC here, I need to take them down in a certain order. So, yeah. Shoot this guy. I'm going to shoot this guy. I'm going to shoot this guy here. And I missed. That's unfortunate. Shoot this guy. Yeah, one of the things that you need to be worried out is not to miss a shot. Missing a shot, especially on this game, has a big, big, like, bad uh, outcome for it. As you're going to end up getting uh, more soldiers coming up soon. But that's fine. I can take them down. There's one left. There we go. We have took them all down, so we should be fine. I'm going to pick up their weapons. I do not need the weapon. I just need them so I can sell them to Drepin. Hopefully, I'm going to have enough money so we can purchase the 50 caliber. Although, I don't think it's possible, but we're going to see how things are going to work out. So, the next area. We're not done yet with Co Valley. Uh, there are going to be militia here, and there are going to be a bunch of PMC. There's a certain line that I need to take, and I need to be careful not to screw up this line. Otherwise, I'm going to have to end up getting a PMC following me. So, let's see. There we go. So, we should be fine. So, I'm going to shoot this guy. And then we're going to follow this guy as well. I need to keep my distance because they can actually hear your footsteps. And you might end up losing uh, Big Boss Emblem because of that. So, the next area, Power Station. Uh, they're going to be... This is a fight. This is an area uh, where the PMC and Militia are actually fighting, which means they're going to be a lot of RNG. That could happen. They're going to be four soldiers that I need to take down with my Mark II pistol. And we're going to cut through the area. So I need to be uh, precise with my shooting here. So this guy, I'm going to pick up his G3, which is going to be helpful against the next boss fight. And I'm going to start taking down these PMC guys. There we go. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. There's going to be one more left. I'm waiting for him to show up. Can you stand still, please? Hmm. All right. Uh, 
is not asleep. Come on, go to bed. There we go. Now we can continue. Yeah, I'm trying my best not to take an alert, especially here. Yeah, especially on this particular part. And as I said before, there's still a chance that we can get a 50 caliber by the beginning of Act 3. I just need to be careful and not to get an alert. Because if you ended up getting an alert, you lose 10,000 points. So, Every we need to be careful. We need to be a little bit careful here. So here we meet Repens again. He's going to tell us about the B&B, &B, which is the Beauty and the Beasts. Which are the bosses that we're going to end up fighting in this game. So... Yeah. So, starting from now, we should be fine, as the game is going to become, like, tremendously easy. And you should not to be worried about any bad RNG whatsoever, with the exception of one area, which is the Vista Mansion, coming up soon. Here I pick up the Javelin, and I'm here, I'm going to shoot the wall. I'm going to sneak behind this guy, shoot him, freeze him. And, yeah, now we can continue. I'm going to shoot this guy from far away. Come on, go to bed. There we go. So, these guys drops custom parts. Custom parts worth a lot of money. For example, this one worth 12,000 repin points that's being sold to repin. And this is going to definitely help us a lot with achieving our goal, which is getting the 50 caliber by the beginning of Act 3. So this is Raiden. Yeah, Raiden is here in this game, by the way. And we're going to go and meet him soon. So this area, uh, there's a new route, thanks to Sparty. Instead of shooting this guy, we're going to just sneak in behind him and continue forward. You only save, like, a little bit of time. But the fact that you do not have to worry about shooting a guard and be precise about shooting a certain guard... And he noticed me, which is fine. So here I'm going to equip the Operator and the Stun Grenade. And then we're going to continue forward to the next area, which is the Vista Mansion. Yes, the 50 caliber is 160k. Dropping points on Sunday and Wednesday. And it's such a powerful weapon. It's going to definitely help a lot against Raging Raven. I mean, if with a little bit of luck, you can actually beat Raging Raven within like 12 seconds. It's really, really crazy. So here, I'm going to shoot this boulder. And then I'm going to go here and throw a stun grenade. Hopefully, I'm going to end up stunning the guard right here. There we go. And he's stunned. It's really important to stun this guy. Really, really important. If you do not stun him, Run is dead. Run is fucking dead. And I apologize for swearing, but it is really, really dead. The only thing that he can do is pretty much die and try again. Because this guy have a master key, and it's not a key, it's called a master key, which is a shotgun add-on for your M4 custom. Which is extremely important uh, for the next boss fight and for the uh, fighting the second form of the beauty and the beasts. The beauty form. So now we're rushing through the Vista Mansion and... Uh, there are a bunch of PMCs that are going to be on, on the way. Hopefully, the militia is going to end up killing them. And you can see them here. They are on the right side. I might get spotted by them, and there's nothing I can do about it. Hopefully, that will not happen. Uh, there's one coming from the left. I need to go in fast. All right. I did not get spotted, which is good. Here, I'm going to throw a stun grenade. Stunning the guys on top. And I'm going to pick up this guy's weapon. I just picked up the M63, and I'm going to pick up this guy's weapon. I do not need the weapon. However, I need the ammo inside the weapon. More custom parts on the way, which is good. So, yeah, everything seems fine and dandy. And we're going to go in, meet Naomi. But before we do so, we're going to pick up the Claymore. Remember, we picked up the Petrol Bomb, and now we're picking up the Claymore. This is for Vamp boss fight, which is going to fight uh, later on Act 4.
So here we just met Naomi and Nano Machine Son. So uh, there is a bunch of story stuff, lore stuff that is pretty much happening here. And suddenly, out of nowhere, we're pretty much getting attacked by frog units. So we're going to have to take down the frogs really, really, really fast. So remember the stun grenade that we just picked up earlier? We're going to use it here. So I'm going to head to this position. I'm going to throw three stun grenades. You're surrounded, Snake. You'll have to break through to go after Naomi. Take out those enemy soldiers. Clear there we go. I'm going to pick up more. Actually, one of them survived, which is fine. As I'm going to go in and shoot her. She's hiding behind the wall. Come on. Come on. Did she exit? Looks like she exited. Hmm. That's fine. All right. Yeah, we lost Big Boss emblem again. That is fine. <laughs> so, I don't know what happened. Usually, by throwing stun grenades, you stun all the frog units. That did not happen. We got an alert, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit of time until the alert goes down. There we go. So, by standing on this position, this is going to force the frog units to spawn from that side. So we're going to go in using the drum, knocking them down. Yeah, just an MGS Force thing. And that's all the frog units. So here, I'm going to do some menu wing. We're going to equip the master key that we have, and then we're going to purchase some ammo for it. And then we're going to equip the G3A3, and then we're going to equip the javelin, unlock it, and purchase some rockets for it. And now, we're going to fight... Laughing Octopus. So, Laughing Octopus could be a random boss fight. Hopefully, we're going to get some good RNG against her. So, we're going to use the shotgun here. And then we're going to pick up the V-Ring here. This Picking up this V-Ring is quite important. As this will allow us to use non-lethal da shotgun damage to it. So, I'm shooting all of these bombs and I'm using this bomb and roll into next to a frog unit so I can kill it with a bomb and it will not count as a kill and I'm gonna go here and start doing damage to the laughing octopus all right Okay, I don't know where she is. Alright, she's... Hmm. Nope, she's here. So yeah, uh, her uh, spawn position can be random. You can manipulate it, but it's not that easy. So, we're gonna wait. Hmm. Okay, she's here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of bad RNG here. That's unfortunate. So now we're gonna wait. There we go. Now, once she morph into a Metal Gear, we're pretty much on autopilot. As we can pretty much predict what she's gonna do right now. Now she's going to hide herself as a frog unit, which is here. And now she's going to start attacking. So we're going to go all the way to the left side. And then we're going to wait. Snake. 
So hopefully she will not jump. Which is good. Good RNG, one more shot. And that's it. And that is Laughing Octopus. Not a great fight, but at least we survived. Which is the most important thing. So here I have reloaded, I have loaded the shotgun, the M4, the Master Key, which is the shotgun add-on in my M4 with the V-Ring pistol, with the V-Ring shots. Uh, this will allow me to do some non-lethal damage Snake, she shed her to Loving Beauty. Who knows what she'll throw at you next. Watch out. Also, I forgot to mention that you can do lethal damage against the beast form of... Uh, Loving Octopus. However, you cannot uh, do lethal damage to the beauty form. So, this is why we're going to be able to do this fight quite fast. Alright, now we're done. We need to go and follow Meryl. Uh, Meryl, what am I thinking about? Okay. Yeah, uh, follow Naomi. So, this section, uh, basically, uh, you're supposed to use the solid eye and check her trail. But, uh, thankfully, this part is not random. You can pretty much follow the same route over and over again. So, you do not need to use the solid eye and pretty much check her footsteps whatsoever. So, yeah. Looks like they split up here. So yeah, this part is pretty much chill. The only thing that you need to be worried about is not to get spotted by enemies. Wow, Grandfather's Naomi? Clock! With the seven gifted sub, thank you very much. Grandfather's Clock, thank you guys very much for all the support and subscribing. You guys are the best. Yeah, thanks US for the 400 bits as well. Really appreciate that. Um, we also had a, a total of uh, $9.40, so $4.40. Twenty and then five dollars donated by D Limes thirteen, who said nut. That's weird. Naomi no. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, D Limes. Truly, truly appreciate it. And we are so at thirty-six subs, which does unlock the uh, the the other bonus run we had, which is uh, Metal Gear Solid Three European Extreme Tuxedo run by myself. That will be on Sunday. Thank you for all the subs. Yeah, awesome, guys. Keep them coming. We have a lot of great emotes on the work. So help us get those emotes live by subscribing and get those subscribing points. And I would like to mention, I have another announcement that I'm going to make by the end of this run. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. So, yeah, uh, this part, we're almost at the end of it. Uh, after this part is going to be the escape sequence. Escape sequence can be random. The first part is not that random. It's just the second one that is kind of actually kind of scary. And uh, there is nothing much to be doing here. And yeah, uh, we're almost at the end of Act 2. So let's just hope things are going to go accordingly. Uh, I forgot to mention, we got an alert before. So yeah, Rip getting 50 calibers at Act uh, 3. But let's just hope we can get a Fox Sound rank by the end of this run. Keep in mind, we can still get a Fox Sound rank, and the requirement for Fox Sound rank is exactly the same with Big Boss Emblem, except that um, you need to get less than three alerts. So here. Uh, the guards are pretty much on a zombie-like state. We have unlimited ammo, so we're going to shoot down these power armor guard. Language, buddy. Language. Already done, Arakan. So, I'm going to take down these guys. It's really important to not only of them latch in onto the vehicle. And by doing this, this is going to make the next section a little bit easier. Alright, 
right. Come on, Dribbin. Time to move. Unfortunately, we have one actually hanging on uh, the tank, but we should be fine. Actually, there was two, so I need to be careful regarding them, as they can sneak in behind you and hit you. So this is the part that is kind of scary. It is actually a scary part, as you might end up getting critical shots by the geckos. So I'm going to have to have a ration as a backup in case things went wrong. Hopefully things will not go as wrong. Really, really wrong, actually. All right. So I'm shooting these geckos. It's really important to focus on the geckos that is pretty much right in front of me, as they are the one that pretty much can end up shooting you. And you might end up getting a critical shot because of them. Come on, buddy. Let's go. There we go. So, uh, now that we get past through the gecko parts, there's the gate parts. And we have a gate and we have a song for it. What a gate with hardness and sealness through the day. What a gate I'm aiming and shooting to win. What a hard steel gate But my bullets won't come through I give my shots Not for honor But for this gate In my life I keep shooting at it And it's down I'm still in a dream, gatekeeper. So yeah, I mean that gate is really, really special. Have you ever seen a gate that have a health bar and that health bar regenerates? Yeah, if you keep, if you stop shooting that at that gate, its health get regenerated. That gate is a living being, and we just killed it. So we have geckos here, we're gonna shoot them down. So due to the fact that our health is really, really low, there's a chance that we might end up having our stress meter go high. And you do not wanna have a really, really high stress. If you end up having more than 50% high stress, your stamina is gonna end up getting uh, lower and lower, which means there's a chance you might end up having a pack pain when you roll, so... So we're almost at the end. Stress meter is building up, which is not good. Come on, Drippin. All right, we're good. So yeah, uh, thankfully the stamina did not get lowered, which is the most important thing. So we can roll here quite safely and without having to worry about getting 
absolutely uh, worrying about getting back pain here. So we're on the market. Geckos are attacking this place, so we need to run to the helicopter. So this gecko can kill me. This is why I have a ration equipped. Thankfully, that he did a superficial damage, which is good. And that's the end of Act 2. So, yeah, we have two alerts. Which is... Feels bad, man. We're like 10,000 points away. If I did not get that alert, I mean, I would be able to uh, get... I would be able to pretty much uh, get 160, which is pretty much enough for the 50 caliber. But that's MGS4. What can we do about it? There's nothing we could do about it whatsoever. Well, the only thing that we need we can do is pretty much keep on going, keeping on, keep on. So, so now we have made it to Act Three. Act Three. This is the most boring act in the game. And, yeah, this is the time if you wanted to go take a break. I mean, go kiss your loved one, hug them, take a shower, stretch a little bit, drink some water, get yourself some coffee, because we're going to have a great marathon coming up soon after this. We're going to have great runs coming up after this. And there's nothing much to do here, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to follow this resistance member, and this guy is a chill guy. He's going to take his time walking around, so... Yeah, there's like 11 minutes. Nothing is. I'll jump in here quickly if you don't mind, Jack. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so thank you for the 100 bits, uh, CDOS. Really appreciate that. And thank you for all the subs and donos we've had coming in so far. Coming up after this run, we have Silent Hill 4 The Room by Casino Coin. And just after that, we'll have Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow by Makarov360. Um, tons and tons of great runs coming up. And I will post the schedule in the chat for everyone to see. Awesome. Apart from the, uh, the marathon, we also have the relay race between... Team Ration and Team Calorie Mate uh, on Saturday as well, and that's going to be a, a fantastic time. Good, you found a resistance member. Now tail them without letting them know you're there. All right, so this is the resistance member. I shot, and he's going forward. Ah oh, man, come on. I mean, it's been like a month. He did not go forward, and during a marathon, he decided to go forward. That's going to waste like. 30 seconds, unfortunately. So, yeah, this resistance member, by shooting next to him, you can either... You can, you can force him to run forward, which is save some time. But he decided to give me a bad RNG and go forward instead of right. You want him to go to the right side, but now he went forward. His being like an asshole, he went forward, and we're going to have to wait for him to come back to his original position before we can continue forward anymore. So yeah, uh, this is the guy. This guy is annoying. Screw him. I hate him so much. So... Yeah, uh, we're gonna have to wait for him to come into position. I need to wait for him to start whistling again before we can continue. Aw oh, man, what are you doing? There we go. So now we can continue forward. Tyler with the five gifted sub. Thank you very much, Tyler. Totally, totally appreciate it. Thanks very much, Tyler. So here I'm shooting down the PMCs. And I'm going to go into this position. This is good to make the, uh, the resistance member to continue forward. To keep on moving. Then I'm going to wait for these guys to fall asleep after I shoot them. And then I'm going to go to him, grab them, and drag them behind the truck, this truck here. Uh, it's really important to not let the resistance member to spot any bodies, with the exception of some of the bodies here. Uh, it's because every time he spots a body, he's going to stop for 10 seconds. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Right now, he spotted the two bodies that I actually shot. 
So it's gonna give us more time to drag these two here behind this truck. And then we're gonna wait for him, and then we're gonna follow him. I mean, here he is. So, yeah. As I said before, there is nothing to do here. Just we need to follow this dude. And... Yeah. And in the meantime, we're going to take any PMCs that we find on the way. Also, I would like to mention, I forgot to mention, I have the face camel for the... Uh, for loving octopus and by having that uh, the PMCs will not uh, you will not get an alert by PMCs as long as you do not carry a weapon on your hand so we have shot down these PMCs we're gonna hide their bodies so the resistance member will not notice them yeah just Right here. Yeah, he's taking a pee here behind that statue. In the meantime, you're gonna go in, take these guys up, and hide them from his route so he does not notice them. And for safety measure, I'm gonna put two bullets because sometimes, sometimes they might end up waking up. And it happened before. They woke up. One of them ended up waking up way earlier than he's supposed to be. So, yeah. Now we're going to wait for our gentleman to come in and continue forward. Now we're following him. It's really important to keep my distance because the resistance member can notice you. And he says, and once he notices us with the <laughs> laughing octopus, he's gonna come in, compliment us. You're looking for a real man? Only if he knows that I'm actually a real man. So here, I'm going to have to sneak in behind him. Hopefully, he's not going to spot me, and he did, which is fine. So I'm going to go here, shoot this guy. His buddy is going to notice him. I'm going to drop down, go in, see if you see him. Shoot his body, and there we go. And now we're going to have to wait for this guy to come in and wait at position. He's going to peek right here. You can see him back there. And the moment he start moving... We're gonna move and hide behind this truck. And we're gonna have like a minute and 10 seconds of waiting time. So in the meantime, I would like to make an announcement. Thanks for all of you guys, and thanks to the Metal Gear Speedrunners team. And the Metal Gear Speedrunners, uh, speedrunners at Discord and everywhere. Um, Metal Gear Speedrunners has become way bigger than what's, what it's meant to be, and I'm actually kind of proud for everyone who's actually part of this community. And I'm actually thankful for being part of this community. I mean, we have a lot... Uh, I mean, since 2017 we're, or 2016, we were nothing. But look at us right now. We have our own marathon. We have a lot of speedrunners. We have a lot of runners joining us. We're pretty much inspiring everyone to speedrun Metal Gear games, and people are loving it, and people are liking it. Before, Metal Gear speedrunning was just... doesn't matter anymore. 
But right now, it's a big part of the community. It's a big part of the speedrunning. And the fact that now we can get like Metal Gear games at big events like ESA and GDQ. So thanks to all of you guys. And thanks to all of the people who are participating here. You guys are the best. And thanks for all the support that you guys gave us for me and for the rest of the community. And I would like to give a special part, uh, a special my gift, my special thanks for all the community. I mean, I'm su gifting sub 10, su 10 subs for the community here. And uh, I hope we can get bigger and thrive together as well. So do I, Jack. Thanks for the 10 gifted subs. Really appreciate that, mate. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm here because of you. So uh, you've been inspiring people a lot longer than than some of us in the community. Um, but hopefully we'll both go on to inspire uh, many new runners as well. Yeah, I'm glad that I was able to inspire a lot of speedrunners to speedrun Metal Gear games. I mean, back in the day, Metal Gear games were no one cares about them. No one even like think about them. We pretty much were niche and now we are bigger and better with all of you guys. So, let's continue the run. And, yeah. So, I need to be careful not to equip the weapon. Otherwise, the PMC is going to notice that. And then I will be able... I'm going to end up getting an alert because of them. There are going to be two PMCs here. Shooting them down. Otherwise, they're going to notice the resistance member. And then they're going to arrest the resistance member. And then they will execute him. And we need, to this, we need this guy. We need him. It's quite important. So, yeah, well, this is the second part. We're almost done. Not almost done. I mean, there's like 15 minute time, 15 minute left. So, we're going to punch of stuff that we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up the smoke grenade here. Keep on following this guy. Yeah, you guys are pretty much welcome. Keep on keeping on. Keep that in mind. So, the next part, uh, the resistance member is going to disguise himself as a PMC. And we need to follow him. So, I'm going to try and do another trick shot next to his... Uh, next to the floor. Next to him at the floor. And make him run. And hopefully he's going to run forward and not to the right. Saving a little bit of time. Come on, buddy. Go forward. Nice. That's what I wanted him to do. And thanks to that, uh, we're going to save a little bit of time. You can see the PMCs are pretty much noticing me. And we should be fine as long as we do not have a weapon equipped. You will not be getting an alert or anything else. So this is our guy here. He's returning back to his original position. And we're going to wait a little bit as now he's going to continue forward. Wait, buddy. There are people crossing the road. March. Dude, we are in December. What are you talking about? That guy is really, really high. Well, I guess the event of the game is happening on March, maybe. Well, you guys are pretty much welcome. And if you want to, 
pretty much be part of the community, you want to speed on the Metal Gear games, you guys are pretty much welcome to do so. You can join our Discord. You can head to MetalGearSpeedRunners.com and uh, check out all the uh, stuff on the wiki page for any Metal Gear game that you want to speedrun, whether it's an MGS1, 2, 3, 4, or you can like pretty much hop into our Discord and check communicate with some of the top runners for the games that you actually want uh, to communicate with. Uh, this guy might end up getting... Wait, 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 he's gonna die. Damn it. Okay. That was actually close. He might. He was so close from dying. Where are you gonna go? Where did he go? That never happened before. Well, at least he didn't die, because if he died, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. That was close. Sparty! Paging Sparty. What am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do. Just wait. <laughs> okay. Well, at least he did not die, which is the most important thing. You'll let him see me. Alright. I'm gonna hide. Such a weird position, actually. That never happened before to me. And where is he? Oh, uh, he went to the left. Alright, he's in the alleyway, which is good. Wait, is this faster? This looks like faster. Hmm. Well, I don't know. It takes forever hiding and coming back. Well, Sparty is the expert of this game, by the way. He is the current world record holder. Make sure to follow him if you are not, if you are not, because he knows more about this game more than I do. So, yeah. Hopefully he's not gonna die. We're almost there, guys. Heavy lifted, thanks for gifting a sub. Seven subs, nice. Thanks, man. All of this amazing support, you guys are the best. We're getting closer and closer to our next emote slot. Just keep them going. Keep them coming, guys. All right, we're almost at the end. We're almost at the end of this boring part, and then we're going to start Back to action, by the way. guys all right wake up everybody wake up wake up we're done with this boring part hope you guys are done with shower and coffee and hugging your loved one because now we're back to the action there's gonna be a bunch of cutscenes coming up soon and then we're gonna meet big bomber and then the bike chase is gonna start wow sparty with the five gifted sub thank you very much sparty truly truly appreciate it we have a train, hype train, choo choo. Although I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, I would rather say bike train since we're like about to hop in on a bike. So, yeah. Thanks, Sparty, for the gifted sub. Truly, truly appreciate it. 
yeah, bike train <laughs> or hype bike. So this part, this used to be the hardest part of the game, but thanks to the effort of the community and myself, yeah. Um, now it's become quite actually easy to do this area. It used to be the most impossible, hardest thing in the re in the whole run. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna equip a bunch of stuff. We're gonna equip the Mark II pistol, stun, smoke, and we're gonna unlock the XM25 that we just picked up earlier on the previous act. And we're gonna start this segment. So we're gonna have to take down PMCs. I'm not gonna shoot them. I'm gonna shoot the barrels, and by doing so, this will actually count as uh, as a kill. It will not count as a kill, but I'll be able to take down all the enemies that are on the way next to it, and they will not count as a kill because that's Hideo Kijima logic there. And I'm gonna take down PMCs. Thankfully, shooting them anywhere in their body will take them down. You will knock them down immediately. Getting some bad RNG here. Get shot twice. So here I'm gonna equip the stun grenade for the next part. This part is quite important. And I need to throw a stun grenade at the first possible instant. Otherwise, I'm gonna get end up getting shot a lot. Then I'm gonna shoot the Humphy guy. There we go. So coming up, there are going to be two checkpoints. Uh, both of them have... There are turrets on them. I'm going to try and shoot this guy here. There we go. Ms. Chalicey, thank you very much for the gifting sub. Truthfully appreciate it. You are the best. Keep on the hype train, guys. Keep it on. Yeah, we also saw 300 bits from King of the Bees, uh, 30 bits from Dash, and 51 from Platonic. We also had a donation of $3 by Bees, who said, follow me on Twitter at Apache Smash. And I, and I swear he really did write that. Awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Keep on the hype train, guys. Keep it on. This is hype. Metal Gear Speedrunners is now affiliate. Hopefully we're gonna become partnered. And we can easily become partnered thanks to you guys. It is possible. We are at 69 subscribers. Nice. Nice. Nice! Can we make it to 100 subscriber guys before the end of this day? Let's do it. Let's see if we can do that. I believe in you guys. We can make it to 100 subs. So, this is the end of this part. We're almost there. There we go. If you can make it on the second if you can make it to the third escape sequence without losing or dying, then the rest of the sequence is going to be quite easy. Okay. So this part... It's not the hardest, but things could go really, really bad here. So here I'm going to use the XM25 that we have earlier. So I'm going to use it. And I'm going to do some damage to uh, Raging Raven. This will lower her health to 25 to 75%, which is going to definitely help us against the fight against her, as she's going to start with 75% uh, health instead of like 100% health, making the fight a little bit shorter and easier. So this part, there's going to be a bunch of Humvees that I need to shoot down the gunners for. 
And these Humphies could be dangerous as they can do a huge amount of damage to us. I'm gonna have a ration as a backup in case things go really, really wrong. And Dun J Barry donated five dollars, and he said, "Jaguar the goat." Thank you very much for the five dollar donation. Really appreciate it. So I'm shooting this Humvee guy, and uh, it's really important to shoot him from far away. Otherwise, by the time you pass him, he's gonna shoot you. And getting shot by the turrets, you end up losing forty-five percent of your health, which is why it's really, really dangerous. Really important to shoot them down immediately. Same thing with this guy. The moment I see the lockdown highlight, I'm gonna shoot. And I missed for some reason. This guy's gonna kill me. Oh god. There we go. That was weird. I never missed this guy. <laughs> anyway, at least we did not get shot, which is the most important thing. So here, equipping the smoke. I'm gonna throw two smokes grenade, and then I'm gonna hold triangle. This is gonna pretty much shrink my my hitbox and allow me to not get shot by any of these guys. Equipping the VZ again. So coming up, this is the scary part of the run, of this part, actually. Frog units is gonna start attacking, I need to take them down quite fast, and they can actually kill me and deal a huge amount of damage. Keep in mind, I do not want to take damage here. I, would not, I want to take the most minimum damage possible. Alright, should be fine. Oh, we took them down. Okay, that's good. So here I'm gonna have the Sun Grenade and the VZ ready. Using a Sun. Nice, we got them all. And that's how you do the bite chase without using a single ration. There were some scary moments, but we made it. I mean, it's kind of funny, like, a few years ago, it used to be impossible, impossible to, to do this area without using a single ration whatsoever. A Neo game. But the fact that it's now possible to doing this in Neo game, that's pretty much a testament of how the community when they come together, when they come together and start investigating the matter and put their minds and their efforts and trial er and errors here, they can do pretty much the unthinkable. And now we'll be able to do this. Now, coming up is Raging Raven. And since we do not have the 50 caliber, we're gonna have to use uh, the, we're gonna have to use, unfortunately, uh, a combination of Javelin and also on the RPG here. So I'm gonna hit, get into the position. Equip the Javelin. It missed. That's unfortunate. This is gonna make the fight a little bit slow. What is she doing? Okay. This is gonna be a little bit harder, actually. So...
Yeah, this fight with the Javelin is not pleasant. Calm down. Wow. Come on. I missed. One more shot left. She blocked it, but that's okay. The, le the next shot is gonna kill her. There we go. So now you can see the difference between fighting her Javelin X... Uh, Javelin Plus RPG and the 50 caliber. If you want to see how the fight goes, the 50 caliber, I recommend you go in and watch either Sparty's run or my run on speedrun.com, and you will see how fast this fight can become Snake, she's come out of her suit. with the 50 caliber. This is why we need to get the 50 caliber by Act 3. And just like the Laughing Octopus fight, we're going to do the same strats with the beauty form for Raging Raven. Using the V-Ring, shotgun, shots, take down her health mentally. And that's the end of Act 3. So, there's going to be a bunch of story stuff. Where Ocelot, uh, Liquid Ocelot, take control of the system. We're still at two alerts. Let's just hope we can keep on keep these two alerts down, and hopefully by the end of this run, we're gonna get the uh, the Foxhound rank because we're still on Foxhound rank, by the way, guys. So Act Four. Yesterday, I've been doing a lot of stuff, a lot of routing, menu routing stuff for Act Four, and uh, hopefully it's it's gonna work out. I'm gonna pretty much do what I just learned yesterday here. And hopefully things will not go the way really, really badly. <laughs> but technically, if everything goes correctly, we're looking to save like one minute here. All right. I mean, Act 3 was really bad. I mean, it put a really, really sour mouth uh, taste in my mouth. Let's just play something cool. Let's just go and play Metal Gear Solid. What do you guys think? Should we do that? Should we go and play Metal Gear Solid 1? I mean, I think Metal Gear Solid 1 is a better game. I don't know why the community choose Metal Gear Solid 4. Metal Gear Solid 4, yeah, whatever. We should play MGS1. Yeah, this game. This game is dope. This is actually one of my favorite games ever. So this is the helipad. Equipping the chaff grenade. I just did something called fast helipad, which is save like seven seconds. And here I'm pretty much doing what is called throw cancel, which is you throw the animation. The throw animation is being canceled by equipping a weapon. And yeah, it does save time, by the way. So we're going to head to the tank hangar. Oh, looks like that was a nightmare. <laughs> Got you guys. So yeah, there's an MGS1 segment on the game itself. And whatever you do on this segment doesn't matter. I mean, IGT time actually stops during MGS1 segment. And uh, you, can H you can game over. You can... You can game over, you can pretty much die, you can use a ration if you can find some, and it will not actually matter towards your IGT or your score as well. So here, at the beginning, we're going to do some menuing. First of all, we're going to purchase the 50 caliber. Here we go. Now we have it. And then we're going to do some menuing. We're going to equip, stun, we're going to unlock the chaff grenade that we just equipped earlier. And then I'm going to equip the 50 caliber that we purchased, and... Mark II pistol, and then we're ready. So, this is the first menu wing. Chaff, preparing item, and there we go. Now we can continue forward.
And here, we are back to Shadow Moses. Also, Monka TOS. This saw could cause a DMCA. Hopefully, nothing is going to happen. Uh, nothing is going to happen, guys. Don't worry about it. So, I'll throw a chef grenade here. Uh, this is going to be Dorf, Dorf Geckos, and if one of them spots you, uh, an alert is going to happen. So, this is why we use the chef grenade. To disrupt these annoying Dorf Geckos. So using 50 caliber here. That was a little bit slow, but that's fine. So shooting that gecko down. Usually I take it down with one shot, but it looks like my sh my aim was not precise. And now we're inside the nuclear building. So our goal here. I remember I forgot to tell you about the goal here. We're, we're supposed to go in and find Metal Gear Rex because apparently Rex have the is the key to pretty much to launch a stealth nuclear attack at JD, which is one of the Patriots AI. And Liquid Ocelot is pretty much after it. So we need to go in and stop him. So, we need to go in to where Otacon's uh, office is used to be, as apparently the door is closed and we need to go in and unlock that door. Also, 60 FPS, Pog, well not anymore. All right, now we're done. So we're going to have to return to the first floor again, and pretty much the door is going to open. However, there are geckos again. So, yeah. Back to the elevator. Come to think of it, this elevator looks huge compared to the MGS-1 elevator. Yeah, it is huge. Okay, Snake. Take the stairs down. So here is another unskippable cutscene. So we're gonna have to wait. And suddenly, out of nowhere, a gecko actually showed up. I have no idea how he was he able to go through that elevator and how was he who was able to make this elevator move despite the weight limits but it is here well I guess nano machines who knows oh, man. there we go So now I'm preparing for the next fight. Okay, Snake, it's open now. Yeah, nano machines that are definitely the answer. So here for the safety, I'm gonna go in and pick up the stun grenades, which are located here. And then I'm gonna prepare for the next fight. I'm gonna equip the smoke grenade. And head to this area, and now we're gonna fight Crying Wolf. Crying Wolf is the most random boss in this game. Crying Wolf can spawn in at eight different locations. Hopefully we're gonna end up having a good location here. Oh, 
All right. Uh, okay. I think we're having a bad RNG here. She's on the right side. Yeah, she's on the right side. Uh, things are not looking good. Yeah, she's behind this wall. Which means I'm gonna have to go from the other side. Or in front of us. Oh, she's in front of us. Okay, good. Okay, we got her. So I'm using three stuns, then three smokes. There we go. So yeah, uh, by sneaking on her, throwing a smoke grenade, then three stuns, smoke grenades, three stun, it will be more than enough to defeat her. So here is Crying Wolf, beauty form, just like before. Damaging her non-lethally, and she's gonna go to sleep. Yo, buddy, how are you doing? So this is the first part of the uh, of Act Four is done. Now the second part. So here I'm gonna equip the chaff. Mark two pistol, and then we're gonna head to the blast furnace. And immediately, the moment I enter this area, I'm gonna use a chaff grenade. Zoom. And then we're gonna head to the elevator. There's a lot of dwarf geckos here. This is why we use a chaff grenade here, otherwise, we're gonna get spotted by them. Here, I'm gonna lay down here. There we go. Snake. And I'm gonna equip I've got something to tell you about Naomi the M4. What about her? She might Mark II pistol. So, I'm gonna do a str uh, different strats, what I'm usually do. It's the Sp Sparty strats. Instead of using the magazine, we're gonna use uh, the Mark II pistol to produce noise and pretty much grab the attention of the geckos and the dwarf geckos as well. She vowed revenge, Snake. Can't you understand? She vowed revenge. So everything here is actually new. Hopefully I'm not gonna screw it up. So I'm shooting the wall. This is gonna like alert the gecko. He's gonna go to investigate and then allow me to sneak in next to him. However, we're not done yet. There are going to be a bunch of geckos and dwarf geckos on the way. Shoot this one here. And then I'm going to shoot the wall right there. Mm. Alright, we're fine. We're fine. So now we can continue normally. So yeah, this is the new strats by Sparty and it looks actually quite lovely. I like it. Instead of using magazine, just shoot. However, coming up is a nasty area where you can easily lose Big Boss Emblem. This area, I hate it so much. Yep. That's unfortunate, so I have no choice but to kill myself. Yeah. You can easily get spotted by Dwarf Geckos, and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, it happens. Unfortunately, looks like we're going to lose Foxhound rank as well. 
Yeah, this area is really, really annoying. You can easily lose a big boss emblem. I have lost countless big boss emblem pace thanks to this area. Yeah, such a nasty area. Oh, I was a little bit late. Let's do this again. Snake, are you all right? Snake? I mean, wish there's a way, like a, like a decent foolproof way to do this area but unfortunately there isn't the only thing that you can do is just keep on trying and hopefully you can get lucky so let's try again wait go in there we go we got lucky this time and now we can continue so here we're gonna do another mini wing so we're gonna equip the petrol bomb the claymore and the 50 caliber and I'm going to purchase some ammo for the 50 caliber as well. And then I'm going to equip the syringe. This, remember the syringe that Naomi gave to us in Act 2? Yeah, we're going to have it here. We're going to have to use it on this upcoming fight. So coming up is Vamp. Vamp is actually a boss. Is no joke. I mean, hopefully I'm not going to get a bad orange at the beginning of the fight because that could actually happen. So we're going to use the Claymore. I'm going to plant it right here. And I'm gonna equip the clay, the petrol bomb immediately, and hopefully he's gonna take the line that I wanted him to do. And he did. And I'm gonna throw petrol bombs at him. And then I'm gonna equip the 50 caliber, and then shoot his head. All right. That took a lot of shots, and he's far away. There we go. And then I'm going to inject him with the syringe. And that's the first, that's Vamp fight. But we're not done yet. So we're going to shoot the geckos here with the 50 caliber that we have. We can use the rail gun, but for me, I prefer using a uh, 50 caliber. As the railgun, you need to pretty much charge the shots. In the meantime, you guys can enjoy watching the action, the fight X, the fight scene that pretty much Vamp and Raiden is pretty much providing us with. And in the meantime, we're going to take down these geckos on the head. So I'm going to spend most of my time actually sitting down, crouching. As you guys can notice, my health is gradually increasing, so... Yeah. Watch out. Also, I would like to welcome everyone to the marathon to Metal Gear Tactical Espionage Affiliation. It's a marathon we celebrate the channel becoming an affiliate. Now you guys can subscribe and enjoy all sort of emotes that we actually have here. And if you love tea like myself, you're going to enjoy this channel as well. Wow. Okay. Also, if you cannot subscribe, you can actually donate or uh, use bits. So yeah, there is plenty of way to support us. And you do not have to pay money to support us. I mean, by watching, by watching the channel, and enjoying our work is a good way to support us as well. Yeah, just spread the word. Spreading the word about our stream, our, our channel is a good way as well.
We're almost at the end. So yeah, this part is pretty much like an auto scroller. It's time. There's no way to uh, make it faster. The only thing that he can do is just pretty much sit down and wait until the sequence is finished. And we are at the end of it. He can't do it. I can't do it. He's dead. Do we have an issue here? Yeah, I think so. I think the uh, the stream's freezing up. I'm just gonna see. Do you want me to pause? So... Uh, yeah, you can do just for a sec. Uh, the RTMP server is down. By the way. Alright, I'm gonna see what I can do about that now. We'll be a sec. I'm going to take us to a intermission yeah, real quick. It is completely down because it's showing zero, zero. It's not streaming.
Hello everyone, sorry about that short delay there. Um, we should be back now. Um, so Jaguar King, when you're ready, give me a countdown and we'll continue the run. Thanks for your patience. All right, uh, we did not go through it. Next, the next part is gonna be the Rex part. So let's keep on going. Three, two, one, go. So, this is the loudest part in the whole run, by the way. By the way, the music in this part is really, really good. But unfortunately, due to all the background noise, you will never be able to experience it or listening into it. Also, did I mention that this area is really loud? I can barely hear anything. I can even barely talk. So, yeah, uh, pretty much... Uh, we need to just rush in. Do not need to shoot any of the gecko on the way. And uh, yeah, so I've equipped the missiles. So I equipped the missiles and the laser on the back. And uh, I did this in preparation for the next fight, which is going to be against Rays. Uh, the Ray fight uh, is actually like the highlight of the whole run, in my opinion. And with it, you can either like save. With it, the fight itself could take up to like 30 minutes or 30 seconds. <laughs> Actually, 30 minutes is an overkill, so yeah. So now, coming up is Ray. This fight is either you're going to take 30 seconds or 3 minutes. So let's just hope it's going to be 30 seconds. And it's going to take 30 minutes. 3 seconds. Oh, sorry, 3 minutes. Come on. Okay. Yeah, this fight is so annoying. Come on, buddy. Nice. There we go. So that is the backup strats. Unfortunately, did not go the way it meant to be, but we survived. We survived. The most important thing is we survived. And that was my Ling. And now, we have done with Act 3. We're pretty much plus 9 minutes, but that's fine. Should be fine here. And uh, we're going to start the final Act. Act 5. This is by far the shortest Act in the game. Uh, there is one uh, frog unit um, encounter, one boss, and then the final boss, which is going to be Liquid Ocelot. Yep. Beiling, huh? So we're going to do one more menuing here. 
Uh, we're gonna equip a bunch of stuff before we can continue throughout the area. So we're gonna equip stun, chaff, smoke, and the Mark II. Where is my M4? There we go. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna throw a stun grenade here. Job, Snake. You made it on board. Welcome to and then I'm gonna equip the chaff grenade. I'm going to stay on the left side here because we need to spawn the frog unit in a specific way. Throwing a chaff grenade there. And then smoke grenade. Throw it at this wall. I'm going to wait for the frog units to keep moving. And then we're going to keep on moving throughout the shipbo area. And then we're going to have to hit through that door. Hopefully I'm not going to get crushed by a gecko dropping down here. There we go. We did not. And that's it. I would like to thank Mr. Ragnus for figuring out the strats for the ship boat. Because this used to be a really, really hard area. And the fact that you can get an alert quite easily, uh, especially on the final game, is actually quite discouraging. So yeah, thank you Mr. Ragnus for figuring out this trance. So, uh, they're going to be an encounter with the frog units. Uh, they're going to be a glitch that we're going to do. It's not a glitch, it's more like a skip. First of all, let me take down some of the frog units here. Alright. Three, one more. Okay. Here I'm going to equip the smoke grenade. And I'm going to wait for this to go back. And then I'm going to throw a frog grenade grenade next to her. I'm gonna shoot her body. And then I'm gonna do a trick that is pretty much the same, works the same way as Tengo Skip in MGS2. By using the smoke grenades to keep all the frog units keep on cuffing over and over and over. This is gonna pretty much trick the game in thinking uh, I'm actually defeating multiple frog units and pretty much end the sequence. Usually, the sequence, there's like three uh, cycles. Three cycles, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, we're done with the sequence, and now we're going to start the fight against the boss. So this is Streaming Mantis. This is probably the easiest fight in the game. Yeah, the easiest fight in the game. So it's basically simple. We're gonna have to shoot the Mantis' doll, which is the one on the left side that is pretty much glowing orange. And this, the second phase is gonna start. Now for the final phase, which is pretty much a reminiscence to MGS1. Mantis is pretty much uh, controlling Meryl, and now she's gonna try and kill Meryl by blowing her brains out. And then we're gonna keep on, we're just gonna keep on what we were doing for the next phase. Oh, come on. Shut up, Arakan. I'm trying to shoot this woman. 
So yeah, things could go really, really out of hand. Especially... There we go. There we go. One more shot left. There we go. Yeah, this fight was a little bit scary. So we pick up the Mantis Doll and then we're going to equip it immediately. Oh, she blowed me up. Where's the doll? Uh, she took the doll. Let's do this again. That was actually bad. Are you kidding me? All right, there we go. Now we can defeat her. Yeah, this fight, this fight is actually quite easy, but once things go out of hand, it could turn things a little bit, can make things a little bit nasty. And just like other uh, beauty form, we're gonna use the V-Ring. Take her down. But we're st at least we're still, we're still alive, which is the most important thing. I mean, other from like the forced death that I had to take on Act 4, this run was actually quite good, with the exception of few stuff. Like uh, what happened with the Ray fights. But I'm actually kind of happy with this run. So we're at the end of the game. Technically, the only thing that's pretty much left is the uh, Liquid Ocelot fights. Why don't we get somebody else? You were the lightning in that ring. can still shine through the darkness. Go! Okay, sorry about that. My lovely wife is saying hi to all of you guys. So, we're, we're using the last chap grenade on these dwarf geckos. Of course, of course, Apache. I'm gonna tell her, say hey. So, now uh, one more part left, which is gonna be the microwave part. This is an older roll apart. There's nothing we can do to speed it up other than pretty much keep on moving and mashing. Well, just like Otacon said, there's microwave here, and it's pretty much saturated with it, so we need to keep on moving. So yeah, this part, you can actually die on this part. But as long as you keep on moving, you should be fine. Get up, snake. 
Also, we have a good visual on Snake's glowing butts. Still cold in the middle? Well, I guess so. Yeah, he's dummy thick. Yeah, here's a good example of how dummy thick Snake could become. After the microwave section, we're gonna start the final boss fight in the game, and the final boss, Liquid Ocelot, is actually a legit hard boss. He's no joke. I mean, usually, the final boss in any Metal Gear game is not that hard. I mean, when we talk about games like MGS1, MGS3, MGS2, they're not that hard, actually. It's more about executions and pretty much knowledge of the fights. Here, however, things are pretty much different. There's RNG, there's execution, there is... Uh, this fight could become really, really nasty, and hopefully we can get really, really good some good RNG and not get screwed over, actually, by Liquid Ocelot Highmaker. Alright, we're almost at the end. So Liquid Ocelot, uh, there is four phases. Every phase represents a Metal Gear game. Uh, the first phase is going to be the MGS1 game. We're going to do a bunch of like one-two punches against him and lower his health to, to the middle. First, we're gonna get a knockdown, and then I'm gonna start my one-two punches. I'm gonna break his lock. Unfortunately, sometimes Liquid Ocelot can will block my hits. Wow! Did he just ducked over my kick. That is some Tekken move there. Wow, Liquid Ocelot is a Tekken master. All right, now we should be able to start the next phase. Fortunately, Dixo, we ended up taking some, like, <laughs> bull damage, but that's fine. So the second phase, this is the scariest one as uh, Liquid Ocelot will have access to his high maker. So we're gonna do one punches here. Yeah, that take this attack is really dangerous. Wow. Okay. Come on, I press X. All right, this is dangerous. We might die. I rolled, actually, but for some reason he was able to... He was able to uh, punch me there. And you can see the amount of damage that his high maker actually do. This is actually quite scary because I can actually die here. 
Ocelot could do um Yeah, Ocelot could do a headbutt, which is what ended up killing you. Okay, come on. Oh, I was far away from him to see if you see me. This is dangerous. This is really, really dangerous. Oh, God. We're at zero health. Monka. This is really, really Monka. Yeah, one headbutt is going to be enough to kill me. Okay, we survived. We survived. <laughs> that was quite clutch. That was quite clutch. For me to survive the zero health. It's not over yet. So this part. All you need to do is just take a few steps and mash R1. And there we go. And then it's going to be the end. MGSR moment 37. Well, yeah, it was. That high maker did a huge lot of damage, but we survived. So one more punch left. And there we go. Time is not over yet. Usually I time from the moment the credit sequence start, but you know what? Let's just have the time right now. Right now? Uh no, wait a minute, just a sec. I'm gonna <laughs> give you I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you when. Yeah, cool. Uh, time is gonna be in a little bit. Just be prepared. And... Time. And there we go. That's Metal Gear Solid 4. Guns the Patriot, the Boss Extreme. Thank you guys very much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. That was a scary run, actually. But That was a, that was a great run. That was fantastic. Had some uh, awesome moments yes. that we've been... Uh clipping in the background um thanks thanks very much for the run jack that was uh, absolutely awesome mate so yeah so the rest of the run here uh is pretty much like cutscenes to be skipped i usually like uh since we use igt time we pretty much keep on the timer running all the way to the credit sequence until the score sequence but uh, we do not need to do this during a marathon uh, the moment time is going to be is pretty much from the moment that fade out fade uh, Fade out to the white. This is where we actually usually time. Uh, plus, we have like some fake credits. So yeah, and yeah, uh, that's that's it, I guess, for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. Next up is going to be Silent Hole, Silent Hell, four, by Casino Coin. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this run, and enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thank you very much.